Redditors who left companies that non-stop talk about their amazing culture. What was the cringe moment that made you realize you had to get out? Hearing our CEO say compensation is only one part of the employment experience during an earnings call when he was answering complaints about underpaying his employees after we reported record profits. Not my company, but a company from a neighboring building. They had an entire area devoted to football, pinball, billiards, console gaming, and video booths on the ground floor, and it was clearly visible because of the glass windows on street level. Oddly enough, nobody ever used them, and the place was almost always empty save for a few people who used the internet kiosks. When I learned a friend worked there, I asked why nobody would want to take the opportunity to use the awesome looking recreational facility. He told me that people who do use the facility often found it used against them during performance evaluations, even when their use wasn't excessive at all. After a while word got around, and they started avoiding the place altogether. The irony is that their recruitment ads always touts a culture of work hard play hard. We have a great culture. Lots of team lunches and drinks. When I started our boss had banned the social club. Birthday celebrations or recognition of birthdays. Strictly no cake. Closed bracket comma. Taken away the Christmas party. The Christmas break period. And tried to stop people talking to each other. All the while she'd take every second day off and have long weekends every weekend. We had maybe three team lunches in the time I was there, and she always made sure to tell us that we wouldn't be paid for anything over our lunch break. Even though she came too, we had to submit manual timesheet corrections to remove the amount we took. It's like, okay, fair enough but can't you just let it slide? It's not your money and we're talking maybe 20 minutes here. A client also invited me to their Christmas party due to our close relationship and my good work on their files. And she called them and told them I wasn't allowed to go. She told me it was because she was concerned I might reflect badly on the department. Ironic. Really? Lush. When we couldn't say bathroom on the shop floor and instead had to ask a manager for serenity. I think I would just go around yelling serenity now. I worked at B&Q and one of my colleagues was stabbed 30 times by a customer. I was completely shaken. The next morning we were taken into a big room and made to sign a document saying we wouldn't sue them. If we didn't sign, we'd lose our jobs. Also, my colleague was stabbed only a month after they got rid of our security guard to save money. Pretty sure you can't prevent people from suing you. Might differ from country to country, but I like in Germany at least we have laws making ridiculous contracts invalid. This happened a couple of weeks ago, when I was sent out an email to management, excluding me and about two other people, telling them to fraudulently leave good reviews on Glassdoor and to coerce others to do the same. I was at a fast casual restaurant for a couple months and the GM always talked about the culture. You know what's a great culture? When the morning shift and night shift have their daily screaming matches over shit that they each accused the other one of needing to do. It was impressive just how incompetent the entire company was. From ownership down. Not me, but my husband worked for two weeks for a family owned and operated business that touted how important family was and that they were a one happy family. My husband was on his way to drop our at the time two year old son off at daycare before work when son threw up all over himself. Husband called his employer to tell them what happened and that he needed to take son home and clean him up, but he'd be in a sap. His manager told him he needed to get his priorities straight. He responded with you know what? You're right. I won't be back in at all. He was still working part time at his previous job where they had been sad that he was leaving. So he called them and told them to put him back on the schedule full time. The family business is currently in the process of liquidating assets before going out of business and I cackle every time I drive past it. Last year I was working as a subcontractor and I was assigned a new place of work. Just two weeks after I started the new boss wanted to hire me. He put down the contract where, compared to my current contract, pay was down 25%. Average weekly hours as went up by 20%. Vacation days went down by 10% and I wouldn't have a company car for personal use anymore. Before he actually handed me the contract to read it, 
He said I will only make you this offer once, but it's only valid if you change all your pictures on your social media and you sell your car. It's too flashy for our company. UHM. How about no? When my art director wanted to get a pro bono poster on verbal abuse done faster. By screaming at the designer. Inspiration. When I went to firm drinks in a public bar and the firm's fun committee handed out song sheets and a choir of employees lead by a bad guitarist sang a song about how great the firm was to the tune of back quote cause I'm happy. We were expected to sing along. It was at that moment I realized I was in a cult. When I had to phone around to the corporation leaders to find out why none of the mechanics I had interviewed were hired. The mechanics had come from all over the country, and some had waited patiently for months to know if they got the job or not. Turned out the CEO had changed his mind and wanted me to take care of all mechanic work, I was a factory manager, but they knew I'd be upset. So neither he, Bowers or the COO wanted to be the one to tell me. I worked at this business that was real keen on telling everyone they were like a family and chastising me for not going to company parties etc. But that also refused to pay overtime and expected me to work late 2 or 3 times a week. As well as doing a 14 hour a day twice a month for stock take slash end of month. Apparently because we're a family, we were all expected to chip in on the big days. Except it was literally just us bottom tier workers who had to stay late. I quit that place and never looked back. I worked for a company that prides itself on being in the top 100 places to work in the U.S. They bought the hospital I was working for currently while I was doing it work there. For a year they let me stay at the current hospital I was at I worked with a team for countless hours getting ready to switch out at infrastructure over to match the place's new software etc. We changed out all 900 computers at our location after that was done I was then told that in the next few months I would have to commute to the main campus to keep my job a drive that for me was over 5 hours round trip. They did not offer me to transfer or even pay compensation for driving there. I was literally forced to quit at this point. All because a new manager took over on the new fiscal year and decided that the ad department I was in needed to all be at the main campus. When our university's VP explained that the goal of every tenured faculty member was to write enough grants to pay our salaries and replace us with TARS every semester, ideally every undergrad class. Also, we'd be under a hiring freeze but could feel free to be creative and use temporary grant money to hire tenured faculty. Also, we'd all be paying an extra $250 slash year in parking fees to fund a new student parking lot. Dear lord. Was I glad I'd already decided to leave? Eater, I cannot identify the state university system in question. The comments suggest that it's not alone in its approach. If you're looking for a good college to attend, ask plenty of questions. For the love of God, ask about accreditation and do not take we are finalizing it right now as an answer. Nor we are accredited by the three other colleges we are co-scamming with. If you're more specifically concerned about the problem I describe, ask probing questions about the percentage of classes taught by full-time faculty, and grab copies of the course catalog and campus directory slash faculty list to check the reality of offerings. I would also ask about advising. Colleges without advising staff or float that duty onto professors, and that can make it very difficult to get your advisor's attention. Bought out by an equity group. New president on call with thousands of employees says, We have two kinds of employees, those that work a tremendous number of hours, and those that that should find another company to work for. Apostrophe. We have two types of employees, former employees and morons. Apostrophe. My last job was at an independent school in the UK, the wealthy type. During a period of streamlining, the entire faculty were called into a hall and told, in upbeat terms. That we were struggling to make ends meet. Salaries were too high. Perks were too abundant. And spending was unsustainable. For clarity. Salaries weren't too high. And perks were practically non-existent. Spending was definitely unsustainable however. In part because they were spending hundreds of thousands redesigning the senior staff offices. To hide all the cabling. And install proper wood paneling. So then they started listing off perks and assigning them a value. For example. Free parking. Well no shit. 
the school has a lot of land and isn't in a city. Why would you charge? Secondly, nice surroundings. Well again, no shit, that's part of your marketing appeal. Long holidays? Nice try. But I work all holiday. They didn't even get as far as telling me what they planned to do with my job and pay, I was gone in less than 3 months. My district manager told me to talk my key holder out of going back to college. Mind you. She wanted to be a doctor. They were proud that no one had degrees. That's fine. But I'm not working 45 plus hours a week and mandatory holidays just to sell some shoes. The loyalty my coworkers had was so cringy. They didn't understand how we were being taken advantage of because we didn't get our degrees. Anyways. F you. Going back to school was the best decision I've made. Bruh I think I just went through the same bullshit when I told my boss I was going to school. Dude hit me with a. I feel like you're taking the easy route and don't you think you should have said something sooner? As if staying at UN said shoe company for 12 years and submitting to bullshit 52 hour weeks because you won't hire another AM is supposed to be worth it for me. As if I need to give you more than a 2 weeks notice or that it would even be a wise decision for me to do so. I got really better after that conversation. We, management team, spent months working with a business coach trying to collectively come up with meaningful core values. We devoted a ton of time to it and really tried to decide which direction we wanted to take the company culture. Everybody agreed on teamwork, reliability, a couple others that I can't remember now. And then one day the owner came in and called a meeting. He sat us down in the boardroom and told us he spent all weekend brainstorming and had decided on the core values. They were meaningful ownership neighborhood engagement you does anybody see what that spells? He literally wanted it to be money and just came up with words that sort of worked the way you do in elementary school writing your name poem. He rebranded the entire company from t-shirts with giant first letters and smaller letters for the rest of the word straight down the arms. To plagues. Raps on the cars. Every fucking thing. And that's when we all knew it was going to get bad. Money is great. But it was mortifying walking slash driving around with that plastered everywhere. I was in sales, and it was an alright office. Had a keg in the break room, that we could get to in Fridays. One day they bring all the salesmen into the break room, and tell us all to grab a beer. They then told us that from now until the rest of the year, about 5 months, we weren't going to be paid commissions. Which was about 70% of our money. 4 of us just got up and left. What the hell did they expect? I have no idea. Last I heard everyone I worked with is gone and they rehired salespeople on minimum wage. That was about 2 years ago. I give them another year before they shut their doors. When I started actually working on the floor and management was nowhere to be found. We treat our employees like family, ignores harassment claims, hires from outside the company, refuses to give out decent pay, will write you up for doing overtime, but the CEO just bought himself a new BMW. I hate that place. We treat our employees like family. We expect you to always be on call for us. Always ready to help us out and always forgiving our mistakes. In return you may consider yourself a part of our family. Apostrophe. When I took a 40% pay cut, with no change in workload, by being moved to salary, 